computer. Wonderful. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. Finally, a little late today, but we got there in our next, our next section. Uh, one of our members answers the frequently asked questions. Everybody's industry profession, we have those questions that we're always asked, okay? So a, a quick, a quick 20 minute whiz round the world of Valerie Munro. So Valerie Munro, um, so one of the members, of, a, a wonderful dear, we have met obviously now, because Valerie's been here and looked at this garden, okay? So Valerie has met my mum and she's been tending, so Valerie's amazing. So Valerie is a, what's your title? Your horticulturalist. I'm a chartered horticulturist. A chartered and I, think I can explain that if you really want to know. Exactly. That is wonderful. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to do, I'm going to spotlight the Valerie, haven't I? Spotlight for everyone. That's wonderful. That's good. So you're nice and big. So I've got the question here. So, okay, Valerie, so, so glad of you, of you come. Thank you. You've been with Zuko well, a few months. You enjoying it so far, yes? Oh, I'm really, really enjoying it. I And, and to try and put my finger on what it is, whether it's the freewheeling attitude, whether it's the fun, whether it's just, I, I couldn't explain, but there's a magic ingredient at work and I'm really having a blast. Thank Good. you. I'm glad, wonderful. So Valerie, so lovely question. You've got, you got the gist of it, you've got the idea. These are perfect, okay, right. So first question, what's the difference between you, a garden designer and a gardener? Well, uh, gardening is the practicing of, a uh, practice of growing and cultivating plants. So I hope that all those people in there w could call themselves gardeners. But the definition between me and a garden designer, well, a garden designer will provide a complete service, uh, including planting plants, hard landscaping, paths, walls, paving, decking, and they will put in water features, lighting and garden furniture, something I don't do. And they will normally start from a clean sheet of paper. And that may mean removing all the existing plants. So you get a dream um, on a piece of paper. This is all very well. Um, it tends to be quite expensive, but if this is what you want, that's absolutely fine. I've got no argument with that. Whereas I come in at the right at the other end of it because I'm, I'm the sort of um, garden coach or tutor, plant agony aunt, or whatever you like to call me, or my, I could be oh, all yeah. secret garden weapon, garden doctor I heard, but I only work with plants and people. So there are no walls, no decking, and not necessarily junking any plants at all. I might move them, but uh, the essence is that I'm sharing with the garden owner my long acquired plant knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that is really yep. the basis. That now, makes, I mentioned that, 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 horticulturist, and this is, this is slightly important mm -hmm. because um, it's described as the ultimate achievement as a horticultural professional. And before you even start, you must have a, uh, some sort of degree that's relevant to horticulture or the equivalent of maybe 100 years working at the coal phase. Mm. Um, and the thing is, you, you're invited to, to apply and it takes you a while to fill in thousands and thousands of words as why why you actually ought to have it. And you get given it, you think, woohoo, this is wonderful. And damn it, every year you have to then justify why you're allowed to hang on to it. So every year I'm doing this continuing personal development, which you'll find in a lot of other professions. But um, yeah, it seems harsh to work hard to get a gong and then you... <laughs> you of course, say. absolutely. Make sure you're... Absolutely, that makes, that makes perfect sense. The next, next question, lead beautifully on. So why did you set up Auntie Planty and how long have you been going? Well, I set up, I set up Auntie Planty um, because plant problem solving has been my bag since my sandwich year in my university course. When I quickly found myself on the staff of Garden News, it was a, a gardening newspaper weekly. And um, they said, oh, you know what you're doing. So I was answering the, the problem letters that came in through distressed gardeners. And it was really quite funny. Um, and I went back to college to finish my degree. And that sort of analysis uh, I get sent something in the post, it'd be a squidgy old plant. It was probably quite reasonable when it went into the post, but by the time it came out into my hands, it was long gone dead. And then I had to try and work out how it got there. So this sort of analyzing um, an issue, I find quite helpful. And when I went back to, to university, uh, if I didn't know the answer to something, I would be sitting there thinking, well, 
it's not that, so it must be that. And if it's that, mm -hmm. might be a bit of that, but mm -hmm. so it served me in very good stead. And I have to say, I, I graduated with a very decent degree. Well done. And, and, the, and the name Auntie Planty, is it simply the Auntie Randy Planty? Well, yes, I <laughs> plant agony aunt. Um, I, who knows? But it sort of found me. <laughs> and I have to say, Nick, as you're the only man in the room, to begin with, when I started networking, blokes would laugh as, oh, 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 what a silly name. And I said, well, um, can I just uh, talk to you about this? A, it's A. So uh, whatever list I'm on, I'm mm -hmm. at the top. And Auntie Planty, you say, is such a ridiculous name. You'll remember it. Mm -hmm. So for being at the top of the list and being memorable, mm -hmm. you know, I can work with that. Sounds good. And I said, I gave you a suggestion, didn't I? I'm sexy and I grow it. <laughs> and I, I, I quite like that, but you know, whatever. But no, it's, it's a great name, okay? So what has been your favourite Auntie Planty job so far to date? Well, I get to meet a huge range of uh, different people because they may bring me in for just a couple of reasons. Something they, they can't work out what's happening. Or, you know, they may be in complete, you know, Ugh, I don't know what I'm doing here. And if I could just... Uh, there, there are two people, and I don't want to diss anybody in the room because I love you all, but I haven't got your permission to share a story. So I'm going to go outside the room for this. Um, there are two uh, in particular, and whereas one might have seemed to be my absolute worst nightmare, um, she has come round to be one of my best. Now, they're both widows. One lives in Thames Ditton, and the garden had belonged to her husband, who sadly died. And she was absolutely bereft. She thought she had to continue to look after this garden as her husband would have done. Beautiful walled garden, but planted in a very blokey way. And I can take time to explain that some other time. And she would be Googling everything, over Googling a problem. And she'd ring me up and said, oh, what do I do about this? And oh, Mr. Google said that. I said, oh, please just, just hear me out. I'm just going to explain what's happening and this is what we need to do. So gradually over these three years, she stopped over Googling. Now I saw her the other week, I popped in and she got one or two questions. And as I was leaving, I turned to her. Now she has been an absolute nightmare because she's been over, over intellectualizing absolutely everything. And on the phone, a rather dozy dory voice. And when I see her phone coming up, I think, oh God, now what does she want? But I turned to her and I said, I am, do you know what? I am so proud of what you've done. And she completely melted and said, oh, I'm so pleased you said that. I said, the garden is now yours. Mm -hmm. When I met you, you were like, as if you were jumping out of an airplane and you were quite knuckling, you wouldn't let go. But now it's your garden and it's beautiful. And she went, oh. So I, I thought I've succeeded here. Mm -hmm. now, the other one, she, her husband was blind. And uh, while she was looking after him while he was so ill, she was really, really very committed. And she didn't have much time to look after the garden, but realized that after he died, this was it. And she has a very bossy daughter who lives 50 miles away. And of course, with lockdown, couldn't get anywhere near her, which was in a way, it, 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 it in my favor because I wasn't locking horns with the daughter mm -hmm. saying oh you must do this you must do that you must do the other this garden was going to belong to this lady and we put it to bed just before uh, winter and I went back to see her again and the last thing I did was I fed the plants and I explained why I was doing it and I explained what I was using and we did it together and this spring it was just like the sun was rising she said oh, do you know that plant there has never flowered and I've never had such beautiful, and we walked around the garden and it had just responded mm -hmm. to a dose of plant food. And that's all I did. But she, you know, she, she is now totally engaged with this garden and the bossy daughter hasn't had a, hasn't had a, you know, a part to play in it. And she, she's, delighted very long-winded but that's all well, good i mean i have to give, give me an example of a blokey garden i mean what what did, other than like a football pitch down the bottom there what, what do you mean a bloke give me an example of what a blokey well, garden is nick i don't want to hurt your feelings at no, all. I'm, I'm i don't i'm not offended i can't be offended it's impossible okay well uh, it, it's 
yes, it, it's difficult without using my hands and using a few pictures. But if a garden is a, a blokey garden, it's, it's there's a lot of straight lines. Okay. And there are a lot of um, maybe all the spring plants will be in one place mm -hmm. and all the summer ones will be in the other. They're, they're sort of all clumped together mm -hmm. so that bits of the garden go dead for, mm -hmm. a, for a long period of time. And just by mixing things up a bit, mm -hmm. you can actually turn a few lights mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Well, 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 I mean, this garden was, was, was well, no, it wasn't Dad's really, after you. All right, so what, what's the most difficult garden pest to control? Well, I think possibly it's the vine weevil because it's underground. Mm -hmm. And the, the only way that you know that it's there is if the leaves are knobbled from the edges. So this pest has chewed holes mm -hmm. along the leaf edge. Mm -hmm. That is a vine weevil. And you think, oh, is there a spray for that? No, it's now in the soil because the plant, the pest, I've got a little vine weevil here. I don't know if you can see it. It's it's a beetle. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I and know, it's yeah. A nocturnal insect. Mm -hmm. And it comes where you don't see it. And then it goes, ooh, I like that plant. And it will lay a whole lot of eggs. So the, the grubs are underground. Mm -hmm and they're actually eating the roots. So the problem is now in the soil and it's getting the notion that actually, if you take that novel plant out and throw it away and put another one in, it's the same thing's gonna happen mm -hmm. because it wasn't the plant at all. It was what's in the soil. And it's that sort of leap going from, oh, is there a spray for it? Well, I wish there was, but there isn't. So there is, there is a treatment mm -hmm. and I will go to uh, great lengths to explain and the thing about a pest is that you try and hit it at its weakest point and the weakest point is actually to get for every one of these that you can knock off you're denying an adult to go away and lay hundreds of eggs so it, there, there is a reason why we do things in it's like order mm -hmm. yeah, of course it makes sense so, so, so what is the biggest plant misconception that you find yourself regularly trying to correct well, you know, I go into a garden where somebody has a family and they have children and they have plants that don't look terribly well. And I will talk around. I don't say, have you been doing this to your plants? And my little innocent question is, are you feeding your plants? Oh no, didn't know how to do that. And I would say, you have children? you feed them mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the penny drops I mean it's a hard hard fact that if we don't look after our soils and do nothing in terms of returning nutrients to the soil we will have depleted soil in 40 years it'll be rubbish you won't be able to grow anything in it so as gardeners we really have a duty of care to you could say to the planet um to return some nutrient value to the soil to keep it going mm -hmm. and it's it, it's somehow it's, oh. and water rain doesn't water the garden adequately mm -hmm. plant is sort of hanging out <laughs> i'm desperately thirsty and i said have you been watering oh no but it rained it rained last night yeah dry soil repels water so if you've got a pot and it's dried out and you water it you may as well not bother there are ways and ways of doing it and playing the hose pipe on it for 10 minutes isn't one of them. Mm -hmm. It's it's difficult. But once the penny drops, it's amazing. And the plants respond extremely quickly. Well, OK, thank you. So you mentioned university earlier. You went to university to learn all about plants. So what's the one thing you'll never forget? <laughs> well, um, there are actually two. Very early on in the course, they said, tidy up as you go along. And the subtext of that was you want to get invited back. So if you're actually doing a clearing job, actually um, clear up yourself as you're going along. So that actually by the time you finish the final snip, uh, you turn around and, and the garden is absolutely neat and tidy. And that's impressive. And people do notice that mm -hmm. instead of just fling, 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 fling. And then you've got, you're up to your armpits in, in cut plants. And the next thing, and it's probably very important is don't fight nature. If you've got a garden that's in the shade, 
forget having it full of roses because a rose will on average need six hours of direct sunlight on its, on its stems to produce flower buds. So if you put a rose in the shade, it's just going to sulk. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you put a shade loving plant into the sunshine, it will absolutely cook. So don't fight nature. Excellent, thank you. So you got here, tell us a bit about being a guide at Kew. Right, well, it was just after my mother died. Uh, I really needed some headspace. And I not long moved to London and my brand new husband was a, um, a friend of Kew. So I decided just to nip off and get some space because my mother left a hell of a hole. It was just, uh, ooh. Anyway, it was some time ago. And while I was in queue, there was a little note pinned to the Palm House door. Would you like to join our team of uh, schools explainers? And I thought, oh, well, I'm not doing anything very much at the moment. So, so I joined the, the team of uh, schools explainers and we were in the Palm House and we had a table of all sorts of things that you would normally uh, use out of the kitchen cupboard but they all had a direct association to a plant in the plant house. So this was to try and dispel the myth that little boys and girls in Hounslow and Richmond and Chiswick, people said the, the uh, rainforest is disappearing. So nothing to do with me, mate. Um, if the rainforest disappears, then you will not have sheets. You will not have cornflakes. You will not have toothbrushes. You will not have all the things that people use every day of the year. Now, I've been having a great time doing this, but one day this bustle of women came in and everybody was sort of at, like, like Mother Hen. She was at the front and all these people were shuffling behind her and she was pointing up and looking up. And I said, oh, who's that? And I was told in hushed tones, oh, that's a cute guide. And I said, oh, that's what I really want to do. And I get to play with visitors. We had a fairly intense training. And I get up to 20 visitors who come to the queue. And my attitude is they really want to have a nice time. They don't want to be lectured. And you tell them stories. And you know it, they, they have a great time. And they realize that actually queue is a very important place. Mm. It's a world heritage site. Queue's mantra is all life depends on plants. And by, by golly, it does. Mm. But I have fun. And I play with strangers every week. And I wouldn't be without it. That's wonderful. So a couple, a couple more, a couple of questions before we go, go to any a Q and A section. So, have you got any secret remedies? I, oh, I, I do, I do. But then, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. Okay, I have the constituent parts of my remedy: water, mm. sugar, sugar, washing up liquid. Washing up liquid. Okay. Now, this, these three items will pull a plant back from the jaws of death. And it works. And it's my remedy, and it's called Auntie Planty's One, Two, Three. Is, is, it, I, yeah, I mean, is it equal measures of each? No, absolutely no. not. Oh, you, you, you wouldn't get far with that. Okay. We're talking just spoonfuls in um, two gallons of water. Mm -hmm. We're talking about dessert spoonful in a litre of water. Mm -hmm. And we're just talking about water. No, but seriously, uh, it, it's something that is fairly radical, but it, it has worked hugely magic. I don't know, Penny, if I've done anything like that on, on your plants, but... Oh, it's amazing. It's Sorry. absolutely amazing. But I have to be very careful who I share it with, yeah, because yeah. I, there are certain health warnings that go with it, that if you're going to do this, then you must understand this is quite radical. This is intensive care, and you don't do it every week. But it, it has amazing results. Well, I think we understand that. Okay, so, so lastly, I mean, you've been here. I bought mum a voucher for Christmas. So explain what your service is, how much it costs, and what people get for when you come into someone's garden. Well, garden advice is actually a very difficult thing to package up. So I've devised what I call a garden MOT, because people will understand what a car MOT is, that there's absolutely no shame in it. You take your car to the garage, all the little bits get checked and, and um, fixed. And then for the next year, the car sings. Well, I go into a garden and I can I actually, if I said I talk plant, I, I'm listening and I'm looking at what the plants are telling me. And I'm explaining what's going on, writing all the notes. So after an hour walking around the garden, 
um, I'll then go home and write up. And it's an action plan. And it's, it's, it's very gentle. There's no, mm, you're not doing it right. They're, they're all suggestions. And the, the idea is to end up with plants that are healthy mm. and makes you happy. So healthy, happy plants make healthy, happy gardeners. Of course. And how, how, long, how long did your visit last? Roughly. Well, for, for an, an hour will we'll actually suffice for um, a walk around the average garden. When you say the average, what do you mean? But it's not huge and it's not absolutely tiny. Although little gardens may have more features in them that, that take the time. Yeah. But at the end of all of this, it, it then gives ownership back to the gardener, uh, the garden owner, that they will either do it themselves or I'll come back and help. Mm -hmm because I don't go away until somebody tells me politely, push off, mm -hmm. I'm fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they get a report, don't they? You give them a report, yeah? Yeah, and if there's anything that isn't understood in that, then, you know, uh, we all speak English, just ask. Mm -hmm. And maybe I haven't explained it properly, but mm -hmm. in general, um, you know, it, it, it's a system that works. Wonderful. Thank you, Valerie. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, no, anyone, so any of our guests here today, do we have any, do you have any questions, please? Yes, I have a question. Yes, Vida. I heard you, one, two, three, I understand water and I understand the washing up. I didn't get the bit in the middle and I don't know what you do with it. Sugar. What is it? Sugar is, is for energy. Mm -hmm. And having rehydrated a very, very dry pot, you will understand that the plant is probably mm -hmm. uh, a bit stressed. Mm -hmm. So it's a very good way of de-stressing a plant. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And apparently the, the, uh, the ingredients, the uh, dimensions, you know, the what, what three are three of them, mm -hmm. um, is the same as you get in a bag when you go into hospital and you get hooked up to a hydration bag. Okay. Right. And you get washing up liquid in hospital. No, you? no, you don't get washing up liquid, you get sugar. Okay, fine. Okay. Oh, I love you. So Jenny, you raised your hand. Jenny and then Alex. So Jenny, what's your question, Jenny? Valerie, that was very useful. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you what areas do you cover? Um, and would you consider giving like a, a workshop or I mean we can have a one-to-one -one and, and you know I can ask you these questions, but it'll be um it'll be good once the restrictions are over to do something. In, in West London, my area. Okay, well, I, I reckon that if I can get into the car and drive for less than an hour, then I'm happy to, to travel. Mm. Mm. Um, okay, thank you. And potentially, and potentially, Jenny, I mean, you know a lot of, you know, like my mum, older people with gardens, you might, you might, you might, you, you, you could do with a hand, couldn't they, Jenny? Um, well, yeah, no, but it's, it's just, it, it would be good for obviously other people know to know about you, um, but also it, it, to do like a, like a, an educational workshop, just similar to this, but in person, mm -hmm. um, we've connected with a lot of local churches and, and, you know, just, just networking groups and, and, you know, it would be nice for people to know that there is someone like you that could come and do an audit on their, um, or an MOT on their garden. Um, so yeah. yeah, well, can I say, and I have to thank Nick for this, because we, we were taught, last year has been made us really, really quite creative. We can all sit and whinge about not going out and not being able to do this that, and the other. But Nick actually took me to the line where I was running a monthly Zoom garden workshop. And it is, it's still, you know, early days, but I think it works quite well. I think mm -hmm. nobody's complained and I haven't turned up and nobody's been there. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we talk about things that are going on and if anybody wants more then then obviously I'm prepared to mm -hmm. travel but the, the the zoom garden is and when and when is when is the next workshop well the next one should have been next Monday but it's it's Easter Monday and I'm just wondering whether or not that's not a very good idea maybe push it to the next week yeah okay all right well we'll, we'll, we'll promote that when you do decide that's fine mm -hmm. so Alex Alex raised your hand Alex what question do you have um, I've got a question, but also I just wanted to say for those who are listening when it's recorded that I had a walk and talk and plan uh, with Valerie. She came round and it was absolutely fantastic. I think you were definitely in my house longer than an hour. It might have been more like two. 
She's a grand job front garden and back garden and it's given us a very, very comprehensive report, which we are working through. And it is really easy to follow. And we found out a few really, really important things that are holding our garden back. So I just want to say a big thank you to you. Um, and also, if you lived on a desert island and everything grew, what would be your all time favourite plant, bush, whatever, that you would have to take with you? What, what is the thing that you love? What's she laughing? I'm just thinking that if I told you today, I'd be a liar tomorrow. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, oh, it's just, oh, or, or, or mm, this is tough. No, you must have a favourite. <laughs> what's your favourite today? Yeah, what's your favourite today? I don't have a favourite child. Well, I just, I, can, can I just answer that by that's saying right, something really good. rather? Yeah. You know that we all think that dandelions are weeds. Yeah. That nice yellow dandelion. Yeah. Now, the magic of nature and the magic of how there's a symbiotic relationship with insects and plants. Now, we all think that insects are attracted to yellow plants. Well, actually, what the insect is looking at is this. So it's not yellow at all, because mm -hmm. it's using um, ultraviolet. So in here, that's where all the, the nectar is. So mm -hmm. pollination is, a, is um, you do a bit of work, insect, and then we'll give you a re reward. So move the pollen around, and that's what we want you to do. And then we'll let you have some of this nice sweet stuff. So in, in many ways, asking me what my absolute favourite. Um, I've got some roses here at Penny's place. I'm just going to take one out. It's, I think roses are wonderful. Um, I think they're all wonderful. I'm sorry, I can't answer that. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to put what was a Vida, our Tesco delivery here, by the way, outside. Um, so, well, Vida, I mean, put, I mean, come on, put you on the spot, Mum. Um, t tell us about, about Valerie's visit to, to our garden, your garden. What happened there? Yes, she helped me a lot and several things that I still have to do. I've got a mover plant and the other one is so strong, I can't get it off. Yeah. Oh, my God. Let's go delivery, Mum. Nick, it's yeah. your delivery. Yeah, it's not much Stop. better. Go excuse and me, excuse me. You. Anyway, yeah. the, the, the thing is that I like to involve garden owners as much as possible. So I'm not going to come in and do it for them. Mm -hmm. And I did offer, I said to your mother, I said, right, we, that plant needs, oh, you leave me to do that. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll just mm -hmm. peck at it. Yeah. And I said, are you sure? And she said, yeah, 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 yeah. So I know what she's talking about. And um, I'm going to make a date and come around and Good. Okay. Put, okay. an absolute thug. Yeah. Any um, any other any other questions from anyone? Uh, oh, Penny, you got a penny? Yes, Penny. It's not so much a question. I'm very glad Valerie said about the um, the colour though, because I was very curious mm -hmm. about you know why are there so many different colour flowers? Mm -hmm. You know, is it a different insect, and so that it's infrared? So if it wasn't for insects, we not only would we not have any food, we wouldn't have any colour either. Anyway, yeah. but I. You're not, Sorry, we, we tend to think of colour in terms of seasons. So we've got the pale and the white colours for mm -hmm. winter and then yellow is in the spring and pink and blue in the summer and orange and red in autumn. But we need to go a bit deeper because uh, we can talk about plant pigments and how they interact with the light, which then controls all of their internal systems mm -hmm. of that particular individual plant. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, why, why do we get daffodils in the spring and not in the summer? Because they are light sensitive. Um, there are four main pigments. There's chlorophyll, which is green, there's anthocyanin, which is the purples and blues and black, and the carotenoids, which bring you the yellows and oranges. And then we've got the reds and ye yellows from something called betaline. Yeah. And they all play a role. And they, they, they're the time clocks for the plants. There's some plants that are uh, short day plants. They will only flower when the night is longer than the day. Things like Christmas cactus and poinsettias. And you get the day long, long day plants that won't flower until daylight exceeds darkness. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's huge and it's, it's fascinating. so fascinating. Mm -hmm. And do you know that the deeper green a leaf is, it's the more it's likely to tolerate shade. Mm -hmm. um, oh, good got hydrangeas in London and you bought them because they, they were blue in the shop and you mm -hmm. plant them in your garden in London. The chances are they'll go pink because the soil's all wrong. The London clay has got too much calcium in it, which will turn a blue hydrangea pink. And yet down in Cornwall, where they've been mining tin and, and iron for all those centuries, 
the hydrangeas in, in Cornwall, because they're growing in this mineral rich soil, they're the bestest blue in the whole world. And it's just, you know, again, don't fight nature, but isn't nature wonderful? Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. Really? Plants are just <laughs> incredibly clever. So Valerie, if I put if I put wood ash around a hydrangea, would that help it go blue? Mm, no, you'd be better off with copper nails. Oh, okay. All right. I ain't got any. <laughs> anyway, I always I also wanted to say that it's so worth getting Valerie round to your garden to sort out absolutely what needs doing and how to do it and she and she does help when it's when it's you know too much or a two-man job bloody brilliant thank you valerie good okay well, well any any I've, any last question before i wrap it up no i think it's probably time but i didn't answer my question oh, did God. i what, what was yeah what was come on what was the question that the the description of MOT is perfect, mm -hmm. absolutely, because you gave me several ideas, but we are meeting again soon, aren't we? We are, because you have given birth, Fida, my darling, to a new uh, wing to my offering, and that is of Garden Buddy, and I will come and be with you on a regular basis, if you'll have me. Yes. Make, um, you know, a, a day a month, or something like that, and we'll work together and do whatever has to be done. But we must go through. We must go together through in a garden. Remember, I've got, to, I've, got to, I've got to cover my pots. We need to go plant shopping, and that's yeah. my, my pleasure. That's all part of it. I'm going to be your garden buddy. Right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Well, I'm thank gonna, I'm, you. right. I'm going to. Right. Thank you so much, buddy. That has been so so good. Thank you so much. Um, I will, so this recording will be put up on the Zuko YouTube account and I'll put it in all the links on all the social media platforms. Okay, one, two, three. So thank you, Valerie. Thank you, thank you, thank you.